Hello guys, my name is Tom and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use shadows to shape your subject. Uh, what I mean by that is basically using shadows uh, to add sort of three-dimensionality, uh, some kind of you know depth to your subject, uh, to make it kind of pop uh, a little bit more on screen, make it look more cinematic. And I say that because uh, it's a technique that's actually used in a lot of films. But first, let me give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, which is MZ. Uh, they offer over 200 hours of master class level courses. And with my special discount for you guys, you'll get 20% off, uh, which comes out to less than $10 per course or a little bit more than $1 per hour. MZ is actually a top destination for some of the highest quality filmmaking education online. And if you're into video production or filmmaking, uh, then I can bet you've probably already heard about some of the people who are uh, lending uh, their expertise uh, and teaching on, on MZ. Uh, people like, for example, Philip Bloom. And that's because their courses actually teach pretty much anything you would probably want to know about filmmaking. Like, for example, today's tutorial, which is about cinematography, lighting, but also other things such as audio, directing, editing, color grading, and, and a lot more. They also offer different ways that you can acquire their courses. You can just outright buy them. Uh, or you can subscribe to their membership. With MZ Pro, you're going to get immediate access to almost all of their courses. And also, whatever is not available straight away is eventually going to be added for you to watch for free. Plus, they're always adding new courses. Uh, MZ also partnered with ARI and it already offers two great official ARI produced courses uh, and they're gonna have even more on the way. And at the end of each course that you complete, you're gonna get uh, actual certificates of completion, uh, including the official ARI certification. Anyways, follow the links in the description and also to get the 20% discount code. Uh, now let's get back to our tutorial. Uh, so here's our shot that we're going to start with, which has no lights uh, except my ambient lights in my studio. Now here I turn on one of the lights I'm going to be using uh, for this tutorial. And this actually happens to be the Aperture 120D. Uh, very nice light and I have the, uh, the one of their smaller softboxes under. Uh, and then the other light that I have up here is also an Aperture light, uh, which is one of their panel light storm lights. Uh, I'm going to be adjusting all the lights using uh, their handy little remote control. Uh, and actually there's uh, another light there behind there uh, up on the ceiling which is uh, the Aperture Amaran light. Also I'll be able to control it with the remote. Uh, anyways, here's how it looks when I sort of turn on uh, the two lights here that are kind of front lighting uh, our subject. And as you can see the lighting, I mean she's getting a good exposure but the lighting is uh, very flat, very boring. And that's the number one mistake that I see a lot of uh, videographers and filmmakers do is they, they want to make sure that they're getting a good exposure. But good exposure doesn't mean that you have everything basically in your scene perfectly exposed. Because if you do that, then it's, it's all going to be very flat looking. So here, for example, I, I turn off all the lights and now I, I just uh, turn on the light here on the right side, which is the, the panel light. And as you can see, uh, our shot here, I'm kind of mimicking to make it look almost like we're doing an interview shot. So uh, our subject is looking here to camera left, her right. Uh, and the camera basically is looking on her, mostly on her left side of the face. And now I have a light from the right side, which is lighting mostly the left side of her face. And that's a big mistake that a lot of people do. And number one thing I'll tell you is you usually want to have your key light or the strongest light from the opposite side of basically where your subject is. So in this case, since she's looking to her right and the camera is looking on her, let's say, you know, on her left side of her face, then I want to be kind of more lighting her right, right side of her face. So here's how it looks now when I turn on the, the other light. As you can see, it's, it's kind of uh, because she's looking to her right and that light is a little bit to her right. Uh, it is kind of, you know, lighting her still equally, but we're already seeing a little bit more dimensionality in the shot because we're seeing a bit of those shadows there uh, on her left side of the face. We see in the shadow behind her, behind her uh, cheekbones or under her, her chin. And, you know, definitely when you compare it to the lighting here from the right side, uh, as you can see, very flat looking, right? So here, going back to our light here on the left, as you can see, like I said, looks better. But what I'm going to try to do now is move that light even further uh, to basically camera left or her right. And the reason is because I want to light more of her, her right side of the face and the left side of the face, which is more, you know, what we're seeing in camera, I want that to have even more shadows. If I keep on moving the light further, 
you see now uh, really the only light we're seeing on her left side of the face is is like a little bit there where her left eye is and her left cheek but her nose uh her you know her left uh, like i said her jawline all of that is completely uh pitch black and this can actually be already uh, a good shot because it's it's definitely better i think than just having this kind of flat looking lighting now you might be saying to yourself well okay it's there's definitely dimensionality but there's so many shadows that it looks very dramatic and looks almost underexposed. And uh, yes, the her left side of the face is underexposed, but let's say if you're doing not an interview, but maybe you're doing uh, a film, right? A feature film. Uh, then maybe actually you would want uh, to have these very dramatic shadows, especially if it's a, it's a drama or like a horror film or something like that. Uh, now, for example, you see up here, I also turn on that backlight, which is there on the ceiling. And that just adds even more dimensionality now because we're creating uh, not so much shadows because that light isn't very bright, but we're adding a little bit of a highlight there to her hair and to her like shoulder, definitely her left shoulder. And it's that highlight basically is helping kind of brighten up those areas a little bit and help her separate from the background. Now, we still have these very dark dramatic shadows. So here what I do is I turn on... Uh, our light here which is on the opposite side of our key light so since our key light is on camera left then our other light which is going to be our fill light is on camera right and now when it comes to deciding how bright you want your fill light to be again it really just comes down to your preference and, and again depends on what, what it is that you're actually trying to accomplish so in this case, I, I could just leave the shot like this and we still have shadows because you can see definitely that her right side of, of the face is brighter than her left side. Uh, now here I'm going to turn off the uh, fill light and I'm still going to adjust kind of the positioning of my key light and I'm kind of bringing it back a little bit closer to camera because I want to make those shadows uh, basically uh, not as big or kind of want to add a little bit more light uh, to her left side of the face. And uh, now I'm going to turn our fill light again and as you can see, this is uh, how our shot is looking right now. So there's definitely shadows, as you can see, but they're just, you know, on her left side of the face. Uh, but they're just not as dramatic because they're just not as dark. Uh, but again, this is uh, very important to remember is that you do want shadows on your subject. Because if you don't have any shadows, then you're going to end up with a shot that's just very, again, very flat looking, very boring. So having these shadows, whether they're dark like this... Uh, for example, or like what we have here with our fill light uh, is really up to you, just, you know, the intensity or the darkness of those shadows. But always remember that you want to have those shadows. And as you can see, this technique will work whether you're doing something very dramatic like this or you're doing something a little bit more, you know, lighthearted, a little bit lighter, let's say like an interview, uh, which is up here with this uh, fill light. Uh, now, look what happens when our subject simply turns uh, to, to the other side. Now, basically, our whole lighting has to flip, too, because suddenly we're basically seeing more of her right side of the face. And now her right side of the face is the one that's really not getting any shadows because our key light is on her right side. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is uh, for this kind of a setup, if I were to flip it basically to 90 degrees to the to camera right uh, or having her look to camera right, uh, then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take our fill light I'm going to just readjust it a little bit because, again, I want to create a little bit more noticeable shadows there. I'm going to make that light on the right side now uh, be a little bit stronger because that is our key light now. And then, of course, I'm going to uh, turn on uh, our fill light, which was previously our key light. And I'm just going to decrease the intensity of it here. And, and again, how bright you want that fill light to be, it really just comes down to you, your preference, how dramatic you want this shot to be. But as you can see, again, with a simple tweak of the lights, uh, simply because our subject, again, rotated now, uh, we've relit the shot and just made it, again, a lot more interesting, a lot more uh, d dimensional, a lot more three-dimensional, I would say. Uh, because again, we're seeing the shape of our subject. And this simple technique is something that I've actually shown in a lot of my previous lighting tutorials. Like for example, this two minute lighting tutorial that I did about uh, how I achieve cinematic looking interviews. This, these are examples from this documentary that I shot. Uh, where we did a lot of different interviews, but again, well, it doesn't matter the location or the lighting style. Uh, they all use the, this technique that I'm showing you guys today. You can even see some of these techniques being used in some of the music videos or, or films that I've worked on. So again, remember that shadows are your friend. You just got to know where your shadows are coming from 
and I would always say that, especially when it comes to people or or even if it's a car that you have or a location or some interesting kind of a, a object in your scene, and basically whatever is the center of, of, uh, of attention in your shot, you want to make sure that the side that's exposed or more visible in camera is the side that has the shadows in it. And you create those shadows by moving the key light to the opposite side of the, the camera. And then by adjusting the intensity of your fill light, uh, you can really kind of change the mood of your shot and again, make it very dramatic with very dark shadows or make it look a little bit more upbeat, uh, basically less dramatic. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. But if you guys want to see my two minute uh, cinematic lighting uh, setup uh, tutorials that I did before, uh, then as always, uh, just click the links in the description of this video. And while you're there, don't forget to head on over to my website where you can subscribe to my newsletter so you're notified of uh, other interesting uh, filmmaking tutorials like this or photography or videography, lighting, color grading, or all kinds of tutorials that I, I show. Uh, and you'll be able to find all of that and a lot more actually on my website, which is tomantusfilms.com. So remember, you definitely want to avoid having too many lights from all, all the sides which kind of, again, makes a very flat looking lighting and almost makes your subject look like a deer cut in the headlights. <laughs> and also a quick shout out to our model uh, for today's tutorial, which is actually my wife, Chrysia. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video.